at the end of the year. But I'm Rifkin, joined by Sam. We're up game number four, I said before, and he's taking a gold base quick with this faster gas oh. in the top left. I'm Brian Darius. Is, he's not scared of nothing. It's Sulky. He doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> this is interesting. In the bottom right, as the Red Terran, it is Bjorn. And a big thank you to Eadway for the 11 month resub. It's nice to see such big numbers pop up here on the overlay. Yes. So, what Sulky's doing is interesting. Once again, with the early pool, early gas, you know, you get that earlier queen if you're afraid of a early reaper, but I'm not so sure that Sulky is doing it for that reason. I mean, sure, he had trouble on Orbital Shipyard against those reapers, but to do it two times more? I mean, I guess Brantaris is a pretty common reaper proxy map, but the gold base being taken is, is the, the true mystery, you know? Like, not the regular third that we've seen, but was usually the fourth of the Zerg. Oh, you know, we never went over the bets for this, too. Sorry, I'm just gonna read those out really quick before we get too far into this. Oh, already some chaos happening. Uh, what was this? Sulky at 9,655 for two spit on him. Beyond with 15,791. Hey. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a rule at this point. Don't bet against Beyond. Unless he's playing into reality in a TVT, then there's a small chance he actually loses. Like a 30% chance at limit. 33.333 repeating. The sound. Anyways, so Solky taking this base all the way to the left, truly interesting. And I would, I was wondering if he was going to use it to do an attack or to macro, and it is going to be macro. This isn't always the fourth, I suppose. I've seen some other Zergs take it as their third. It just seems like it's 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 jutting out more, you know. So it seems like it's it's uh, would be the Zerg would be less inclined to take it. But you could also argue for the other third. They're both gold, by the way. Um, that they're such a good conca concave opportunity and abuse of that high ground ramp that they don't want to take that one either. I guess it was just preference. God, creep looks so ugly on this map. Nice toss up with drones, though. Allies are going to get a couple more shots up. The queens are really late to respond to this. A little bit of micro on the other side of the map. Not worth losing with potentially many more drones. Uh, however, only five go down, so not too bad. There's Roach Warren. Sulky did win his first game by doing Roaches. And in, in a surprising fashion, too. It's not like it was it was Beyond's weakness. It's that Beyond did not anticipate or probably defend against basically a, a kind of an all-in. Um, it, but his drop also didn't do enough damage to really call it an all-in. Anyways, if he's hoping to get just an easy win from doing Roaches, obviously not going to happen. Beyond has great defense against Roaches. Just uh, only sometimes, I suppose. It's just, I don't know, something about this. I guess it's the gold base is really influencing every road play. I feel like every time we've been on Freon Terraces in the last while, it's just been Roach Ravager, Roach Ravager Hydra, Roach, 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 Roach. Yeah, I guess you get that much more powerful, like, mid game push, you know? Because the problem with, you know, Ling Bling Muta in the mid game, it seems is that the larva is a big problem. You have to spend a lot of money on the macro hatchery and it actually has to kick in before you're doing good production. With roaches, they're not larva intensive. So you still get that big boost of economy, but with the production actually support a big roach push. That's stuff theory though. Uh, once again, trying to just do whatever he can with the hellbat push since the actual push didn't work out. Uh, he'll probably have some nice amount of links here in the main. Don't know about getting too many drone kills. Lots of queens already here to defend. Uh, inside the map, we get those Ravagers coming in. Keep in mind the magic number is three to kill a Liberator, but the Liberator's not here. It's across the map. And he's... Uh-oh. Oh, Bjorn did not see this coming. I don't think he knew about Rich at all. A tank, a tank on the high ground. That's not going to be enough, I don't think, though. Because even if he takes out the Roaches with the bunker going down, the Ravagers yeah. can just move to safety. He does have a medevac to, to move it around. That increases its viability so much. It's spent uh, so much. But while this goes on, so uh -oh. he's gonna take Liberator damage at the gold. Hellbats in the main. But mm, is that gonna be enough damage for Beyond? Because back at home, he's <laughs> not exactly in control. No, but to sacrifice your natural buildings to make sure you push this back, because you know, he could try and be super 
goes to micro the tank and maybe lose it on accident. I guess is the safest decision he could make. You know, it sucks you lose the fly deeper, but it sucks you lose the things, but at least you guarantee to push this back. So it doesn't lose too many SCVs. 39 not ideal, but not bad. Really, it's just about all that, all those buildings, you know, a lot of money invested into that. Two engineering bays, five supply depots, a thousand minerals. Eight hundred. Hmm. All right, well, tanks are moving out through those medevacs, so it's kind of safe to move out like this. Because if you are out of position, you just pick up and fall back. But this is not a lot of units out of beyond, but it is more than what Sulky has right now. It wishes none. Silky's droning, yeah. and this is bad. He can't afford to drone right now. Beyond did delay his stim, I guess, to to prioritize those tanks. So that is one bad thing coming from the the attack, as well as losing his uh, his engineering base. His economy is back up though. He's, he's saturated that natural, and his attack is scary just because, right? Like Silky was droning. He didn't. He thought he had more time. Losing the third base is pretty big. Saves the drone, sure, but if, if really. Was, you know, if this was more mined out, because it was taken so early, right? If this was more mined yeah. out, this actually might not have been so bad, but unfortunately, that was still a pretty important base. Yeah, this one's not set up yet, so the drones just oversaturate the natural, basically. And it's just, I think what is really frustrating for Solki is that had he known this attack was coming, he would probably have been able to defend it. You know, you, you hold off on your mutas, and you just, you hold off on your droning, and you just get a some roaches, but then again, maybe not. Maybe those tanks being migrated all over the place, tank, uh, roaches would be no good against them, and he did need those mutas to take care of it, so... Yeah, the point is, good thing Beyond tried this attack. It actually works. Muta is going to push into this a little bit. Unfortunately, the Marines aren't going to be enough, so he will take two of the tanks home. Which is nice and also necessary, but now Beyond's in a bit of an awkward spot. Doesn't have that many Marines. Uh, they don't have combat shields, actually. This is huge. He's gonna have a really like combat shield timing for this game, which it's bad enough versus Banelings and Lings, but terrible against Mutalisks. Dropping the main, driving off the drones, but we checked the workers killed, and it's still not too many. It's more workers and economy, not not made. Yes. Shutting, you know, shutting down the gold base though, all things considered, was actually a pretty big deal. So, I guess recollecting on that push. Despite losing so much, it wasn't too bad to kill that hatchery, but it is being rebuilt now. Oh, I think it was a it was a worthwhile push as long as he can can have the time to reproduce an army, which I think he has. I think this is enough. Yeah, it's interesting to see that Thor coming out too. I guess he really knows the limitation of what Marines are going to be able to do. Thor and a couple of liberators can certainly deal with Mutalisks, especially if they clump. Oh, this time he's going to have defenses that his, uh, his third all set up. Probably the supply depots around it. Won't have to worry about Ling attacks in the future. Won't have to worry about mute attacks in the third, too. See that weird wall that's like four depots again? <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that him? I think okay. that was Bian, wasn't it? Maybe it's not. I just remember that on this map, someone did a really weird wall. I was like, that's not a wall. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Maru, because I was casting... We were casting with Frank. That's right. That's right, actually. Sorry, I just assume... Yeah, yeah, right? Yo, what if... Because we don't see Maru and Beyond playing the same tournaments, right? We talked about, like, what if someone is faking oh, being Beyond? God. What if Maru is the guy we've been interacting with all along? He just forgot to change accounts, and he's like, oh, oh yeah, Maru's coming in for the one time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, that's funny. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I think so. I think Beyond might be misinterpreting the situation. I don't know. Um, because hmm. he's going nothing but marines, really, and a lot of uh, liberators too, right? He's not producing medevacs. It's going more is... and more into roaches and ravagers, I not mutas. I think it's actually kind of fine though right now. Yeah, well, we'll see, right? Because it's still a big army, even if it isn't the uh, ideal composition, but... and he is pushing Sulky back. Uh, well, I mean this in the context that marines are better against ravagers than marauders are, for example. So there's that to begin with. But secondly. If he's, he still does have to actually deal with the anti-air. It's not a ton of mutas, sure, but he still has to actually finish them off, so... Liberators, Marines, like, this is a very good complementary army. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, I guess, because they don't take the added damage from the Marauders, that's what you mean when you say they're, they're better, but it is still a question of, like, is it really? Because we, we see, like, other Terrans go mass Marines against Roach and Hydras, and that was, that was had our 
you know, scratching our heads. But usually the Marauders are there because they can actually take consistent damage and be consistently healed by the medevacs, where the Marines can actually be easier burst down, even if it's not a burst composition. Mm. Yeah, I see what you mean. I don't know, it's, it's such, it's, it's still, as funny as it is, weirdly being figured out by a lot of the pros. Uh, yeah. I just, I, I've got a faith in, in a lot of Marines. This particular composition, <laughs> it's more Roach heavy than the first time screen from Marauders. The Roaches get taken out really quick. Now there's Dang. no buffer for those squishy Ravagers. Keep in mind, these bad boys only have like 120 health. And he's just going to be pushed back by these Marines. 74, dodging through that gross and vile, falling back. You gotta yeah. make that look so easy. Oh, he does the need. on the other side of the map as well. Oh! Yeah, he, he does need more medivacs, though. I think that was the biggest thing about his composition was not maybe the lack of Marauders. It's something they did fine against the Ravagers. But just that he was building Liberators. And I'm, I'm really not sure that's what he wanted to do. He he really did seem like he was thinking it was going to be a lot more in Amutas with the Thor and the, and the Liberators popping out all at once. But now back into Medivax to heal up that army. Yeah, he's transferring his main over to that gold, so not going to build a new command center. This seems to be <laughs> trending for Bion, but it's working so far. Uh, this other gold base also getting a bit low now, so he won't have to worry about defending it as bad, but here goes his Ravagers, and his army's actually getting choked up by his factory. Oh, this is not a good place for Bion to have to engage this. Oh, very, very awkward. But also awkward to push in. Bit of an, bit of an impasse. <laughs> Submarines on high ground. There's actually no high ground vision, funny enough, so if there's a tank up here, it'd be having a grand old time. Well, Soki has truly recovered from losing those uh, those gold bases. Now up to a fifth base, and creep starting to really push forward. Beyond really not able to get any drops off quite yet. Does have one waiting in the top right. Yeah, I think I, I think it's right for him to focus down here, though. This is this is the majority of Soki's army. I think this drop's gonna try and sneak around. It will pick up one of the last two mutalists and a Nidus Worm. Got me out of wow. Soul King. Well, it's gonna be Nidus scouted. Worm. Oh, it's gonna be my. Yeah, this is actually quite bad. Now Beyond's gonna know to clean up any sort of overlords on his side of the map. But pause on that thought for now because he is still dropping all over the place. And without air, no corruptors, no mutalists. Catching these medevacs is kind of out of the question. Like, okay, yeah, the roaches and the ravagers can deal with the drops if they catch them out of the medevac, but this quickly scoops up to safety. All right, all right. So not only a Nidus Worm, but a Hydralis Den, as well as a Hive. So it's going to be curious to see uh, if Solky's going to add in any more uh, any more tech. So OK, so a Lurker Den accounts, but also Ultralisk or Vipers. Or we're just going for the upgrades. And as I say, they just start plus one melee, so I think he's really looking to add in some very strong Ling attacks, harassment, as well as potentially the Vultras. Well, Nidus from coming down the main. He should see this. Mm, not responding. Uh -oh. He's just gonna let it go. I'm I mean, not sure he realized that was a Nidus from, you know? Like, you click on it. And... I mean, he also might have distinctly said, screw a base trade. But the chat, that's true, too. He was pretty far he along. He kills the Nidus worm. There's no coming back for Sulky. Those units are now stranded on the other side of the map. It's it stranded about... lightly, though, because they're ah. taking out a lot of these barracks. It was about half of the army. The other one, was, I think, was trying to get to the Nidus Worm, but it died before they could get in there. So this is very wonky, but I... I ah, uh, drops here, drops to the right. I think he had hopes this. Look at these tanks he's got at home. Right? The bio that Sulky's got to choose from. Like, he'll kill those tanks with Trosa Bob. There's no question about it, but the bio should be able to hold this. Yeah, this... I mean, he's certainly got enough of, a, of the army to... Uh, basically win a base race, you know? He is, he's winning that army if it ever comes a head-on engagement. The Nidus Worm still wasn't cleaned up, but then of course it was it was cleaned up on the other side of the map, basically. <laughs> so, he's gonna push through, he's trying to get a couple of lurkers out. That was kind of cool to see. But the Hydras are quickly corralled and killed at the back uh -oh. of the base. Young's yeah, army is separated, though, and the tanks are kind of left alone, though. No, but there's so many tanks. Oh, God. Uh, they're trading out well enough. Those lurkers, though, are the biggest threat. If he kills those, this isn't a problem. Oh, that medevac gets so low that Queen's looking for a couple more shots. Ah, now it's it's production versus well, look, income. No production, basically. Like, no income, no production for Solky. I still think Beyond has enough production that he can still use his bank, as we can see happening. Right. Whereas Solky, he's, he doesn't have any mining. He's got the production for days, but he can't really build anything because he has no money. And the drone count's falling so low, he can't even afford to build more drones at this point. So five workers, kind of the last things he's going to be going for, and I don't think that's going to cut it, Sonic Girl. 
Now, uh, doesn't even get all of the tanks, you know, with one nice blast, so a lot of extra damage on his own units. Finally cleans up that high tank count, and that was certainly scary, especially if used defensively. But Yun has had that time to use his production, to use his economy. A second army is waiting behind this is, him since, since City. This is such a ragtag Zerb group of units. Normally you're seeing the swarm, but honestly, the lurkers are just going to be really strong. There are five of them. Uh, does he have a big enough army to get to kind of stem on top of them? I don't know. Playing it safe just by sieging up the tanks. I don't think he would necessarily want to stem on top of the tanks. It's kind of getting a little bit dicey on both sides. God, Lurker range is so long, though. Yes, it is. Also, that gold base might go down. It's not. It's not mining, so... Either way, Lurker is starting to go down, too, and this is going to be it for Soulkey. Yeah, these, these small drops that we get all the work done in the world on the other side of the field, I mean, they've pretty much cleaned up everything there is. This one ring slowly killing this hatchery. Like, okay, let's say, hypothetically, the Lurking Raptors, the Lurkers kill this base. It's not going to matter. Guess those can move bases elsewhere. That's gonna be game. That's gonna be series. GG, ladies and gentlemen, Bjorn will take that 3-1 sweetness. That is the finals. And of course, almost guaranteed.